Good evening. Welcome to each and every one. Praise the Lord. I'm happy you are here today. And I just want to say that I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time out. All my brothers and sisters from all around the world, I pray for you today that you will be increased in wisdom, knowledge, understanding in the Word of God. And that our Heavenly Father will continuously pour out the gifts of the Holy Spirit upon you to strengthen your body, your soul, your mind, and your spirit. I pray for this in Jesus Christ's name of Nazareth, Yeshua Amashia, Yahweh Savior. And I want to welcome you to a new Bible study series. And this Bible study series, this is the first part, is for to the chosen priesthood of God. Yes. This study is to strengthen the chosen people of God. If you are chosen by God, you are in the priesthood of God. So this word is for you. We're going to be studying from the book of Romans chapter 8. And in the book of Romans chapter 8 I'm going to go ahead and start from the King James Version. Again my name is Dr. PJ from the prophetic word. Thank you for being here today. Verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death and what Apostle Paul was teaching that we who are in Christ Jesus, we don't walk. The chosen priesthood does not walk after the flesh. We have our flesh in subjection to the Spirit of God. So we are in the spiritual realm. We are in another dimension. We are the royal priesthood. And we are the chosen priesthood of God on this earth. And brother Paul explained in verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. We are not law breakers. We don't go around breaking the commandments. But they have made us free. The commandments is to set us free. From the law of sin and death. A day you sin, you shall surely die. That's what God told Adam in the garden. The day you sin, you shall surely die. Verse 3. For what the law could not do. See, the law could not stop man from sinning. In that it was weak through the flesh because the flesh the flesh is stubborn the flesh will make you say oh eat another piece of pie get drink you another soda the flesh is stubborn and rebellious the flesh can always war against you your tongue will war against you your mind for that for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh there's only one savior his name is jesus christ of nazareth and heavenly father gave up him son he took upon him the nature of his mother which is virgin the virgin mary so jesus was in the flesh in order to teach us to destroy to condemn sinful lifestyle in the flesh so he condemned sin in the flesh jesus was sinless he was guiltless so we are followers of what of who of jesus christ of nazareth because he is the only one who was born in the flesh and was able to overcome sinfulness and sinful flesh and sinful desires and sinful thinking and sinful will he overcomes sinful because the flesh get us in trouble the flesh get emotional the flesh get anger the, 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 the flesh do stupidities and say stupid stuff and then we regret it this, the flesh make us want to be violent sometimes even overeaten verse 4 to continue that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us so when jesus came he came in the flesh he lived in the flesh and he condemned sin in the flesh in order for the law to be fulfilled in us because we could have never done it without him coming in the flesh he it was god in the flesh he was god in the flesh he was half human and 100 percent god who walked not after the flesh but after the spirit for that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilling us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and that he showed us how to walk after the spirit we have to be spiritual every human being is a spirit the flesh is only te a temporary house when someone pass away you looked at them in a casket they're not there anymore they're with the lord awaiting judgment and some of them in paradise verse 5 for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit so the people that are after the flesh they worry about the flesh they worry about the new style they worry about their favorite artist their favorite movie star they're fleshly they're on the dating scene they sleep around they do whatever they want because they do mind the flesh so they're going to do the things of the flesh and they're going and they're going to go and experiment and do their fleshly desires but us but they that are after the spirit do spirit the things of the spirit so we are after the spirit we walking in the spirit of god we walking in the holy Urak in the holy spirit so we mind for verse 6 it says for to be carnally minded is death to be adulterous fornicator to be a drug dealer to be a warlock to be a wizard to be to be telling lies to to, to live a lifestyle where you don't care for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritual minded is life and peace amen verse 7 because the carnal mind is enmity against god 
carnal people, people who live in the world, the mundane people, they are enemies of God. A fornicator and adulteress is the enemy of God. And when they come in the church, they come in the church and assignment to destroy, they are the enemy of the cross. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed it can be. A worldly person is not subject to the law of God. You can tell them about God say this and God say that. But the man is a wizard, the woman is a witch, they 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 they, they they're whorish, they're fornicators, they're adulterers, they're on drugs, they gang You can tell them about God. But their mind, they're not subject to the law of God, and neither can it can be. They have to be delivered. Something they have to give up and say, take over, Lord, I'll give it up. They have to repent. They got to ask for forgiveness. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Worldly people, mundane people, people who are out there. They cannot please God. I don't care what they say. They can go on these talk shows and say, but they are women of God and they are, they are they cannot please God. False prophets and false teachers cannot please God. Just look at them. They operate on the spirit of divination, wizardry, witchcraft, spell casters, they're casting spells at you, mind control, telepathy brainwashes narcissism those people they cannot please god they in the pulpit they call themselves bishop and prophetess they cannot please god they word and their prophecies does not line up with the word of god they tell you whatever and you swallow it up oh your husband coming next week dressed up in a red suit and you believe it that is not prophecy that's divination verse 9 but ye are not in the flesh chosen priesthood you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his if a man or a woman Claiming that they are Christian, but they do not have the spirit. Mean their lifestyle have to line up with God. Their actions have to line up with God. They have to treat people accordingly to the word of God. You cannot be a child of God, a chosen priesthood, and then you nasty to people, you racist to people, you prejudice to people, you insult people because of their lifestyle and their choices. You cannot go out there attacking people. You cannot go attack them because they live in certain lifestyle that you don't like. Even if the word say is wrong, who are you to go and judge them? And I sometimes have to counsel Christians who have that mentality let go and let God verse 10 and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin me you no longer use your flesh to go and satisfy your flesh and if Christ be in you you no longer go and curse people out and use profanity and make gossip and slanders and if Christ be in you you don't read your little black book anymore and cast and spell and you part of a sorority and a fraternity and if Christ be in you you don't drink and do drugs anymore the body is dead because of sin I say the body is dead because of sin the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Dearly beloved, this is the end of the first part of God's chosen priesthood. I want you to meditate on the book of Romans chapter 8. I've only read the first 10 verses and break it down to you. Be encouraged in the word of God. Live it. 
live accordingly walk the walk and talk the talk accordingly to the word of God and you will see doors will open see the enemy will fight you but God say no weapon form against you shall prosper again my name is Dr. PJ be blessed and be encouraged to be meet again I defeat you Satan in the name of Jesus